The largest Christian televangelist TV network in the world is Trinity Broadcasting, co-founded in part by Jim and Tammy Faye Baker in 1973. But the second biggest network is also huge. It's called Daystar Television Network. It's based in Texas. It broadcasts in more than 200 countries. Its budget is more than $70 million a year. It became a primary sponsor for a NASCAR team earlier this year. A person I'm assured is very famous named Dr. Phil taped a promo for the network. It's a big deal as these kinds of deals go. Yesterday, the founders of this televangelism powerhouse, Joni and Marcus Lamb, aired a very special episode of their regular morning program, which is called Celebration. They also had a very special guest on the show, their marriage counselor. I discovered that he was having a, an, an emotional um, relationship, if you will, with someone, and that it had turned into a... Um, an improper relationship. Of course, when I came to know that she realized what I had done, I was just, I just instantly went into despair. He had had one inappropriate period of misbehavior with one person, and it wasn't a man, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a transvestite, it was with a woman, and she was a Christian woman. Yes. Now, whether she was or not, I don't know, but she had that yeah. image. If you're confused, don't feel bad. This stuff is confusing. If you are having a hard time keeping track of all the evangelist infidelities you have seen on television over the years, it is hard to keep them straight. So sorted. <laughs> it is, it's hard to remember who's who. Uh, first of all, there's Jim Baker. You're saying that uh, Jerry Falwell is lying when he accuses you of having had sex with Jessica. Uh, and when no, he no, no. And, and when he says when he says that there have been homosexual incidents dating back from 1956 to the present, uh, that I, I admitted that I've had uh, 15 to 20 minute relationship with Jessica Hahn. Relationship. Jim Baker was uh, heading up Praise the Lord Ministries in 1987 when he admitted on TV, among other venues, to having. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes with a church secretary. Uh, but the bigger part of the Jim Baker scandal was not the church secretary stooping, uh, but the money. That's why he went to prison. Mr. Baker was convicted of mail and wire fraud in 1989. So Jim Baker is the church secretary stooping fraud prison guy. Not to be confused with Jimmy Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart's scandal came complete with prostitution and a very tearful on-camera confession. To my fellow television Ministers and evangelists, please forgive me for sinning against you. I have sinned against you, my Lord. And I would ask that your precious blood would wash and cleanse every stain background here is that Jimmy Swaggart had been going after other televangelists like Jim Baker for marital infidelity for years. When the tables were turned in 1988, he was forced to admit that he himself had um, availed himself of the services of a prostitute. So he confessed with many tears. As you saw, he stepped down from his ministry for three months. Then despite having been defrocked by the Assemblies of God, he went back as an ordained minister of his own Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. Then, three years later, he was busted with another prostitute in his car, at which point he told his congregation that his proclivities were, and I quote, none of your business. So Jimmy Swaggart, the hooker, cry and repent about the hooker, hooker again guy. Not to be confused with Jim Baker, the secretary stripping fraud prison guy. Not to be confused with Ted Haggard. At the time of his scandal, Ted Haggard was the president of the National Association of Evangelicals. He was founder and senior pastor of New Life Church in Colorado Springs. And here's Ted Haggard not crying, but giving some of the most amazing local news interviews ever to appear on anyone's television ever. I did call him. I did call him. And what did you call him about? I called him to buy some meth, but I threw it away. And how did you know that he would sell it to you? He told me about it. I went, there for, I went there for a massage. So, okay, we're late for our appointment, and so, but thank you for your work. How did you find him to, to get a massage from him? Uh, a referral. From? From the hotel I was staying at. The hotel where? Uh, I st I've stayed a lot of hotels in Denver because I write in Denver. 
Ted Haggard is the hooker, for what it's worth, dude hooker, uh, no crying, but also meth, which he bought but didn't use guy. Not to be confused with Jimmy Swaggart, the hooker, cry and repent about the hooker, hooker again guy. Not to be confused with Jim Baker, the secretary stripping fraud prison guy. Not to be confused with Marcus Lamb, co-founder of Daystar Television Network. Again, for the purposes of televangelist sexual confession taxonomy, the important thing here is this. He had had one inappropriate period of misbehavior with one person, and it wasn't a man, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a transvestite, it was with a woman, and she was a Christian woman. Yes. Now, whether she was or not, I don't know, but she had that yeah. image. So Marcus Lamb's sex scandal did not involve a hooker, a dude hooker, or an employee, as far as we know. His infidelity was with a woman who was apparently, importantly, not born a man. Also, no crying. So over time, it has been hard to keep these guys straight to remember who's who. We have created a matrix. You can download the full-size version at mattoblog.msnbc.com. You're welcome.